In this video, we're going to create our collectible object. This is what the player will be tasked with collecting. There will be one on the game screen at all times. Every time the player touches one, they gain a point and will move it to a random place somewhere else in the room. This is actually pretty simple, as there is no constant movement or need to detect the edges of the rooms. All it needs to do is sit still in one place and detect when the player touches it, then move to a different place away from the player. So let's get started. We already have our object called OBJ collectible set up. Let's open this and add our create event. First let's add a variable called range. This will determine how far away from the player the object needs to be when it moves. 200 pixels will do for now. This will actually determine a range of 400 pixels across as this is a circular range. 200 is the radius of the circle around the player. Next we need to move the collectible somewhere random with that range in mind. This way, as soon as the collectible is created, it will move somewhere random making each round start differently. To do this we can use a do until loop. We start by writing do and adding our curly braces. Then within these braces we start by setting the x and y to a random value spanning the room. So let's type x equals random underscore range. Remember this function allows us to get a random value between a maximum and minimum range. Let's enter 32 for the minimum and room width minus 32 for the max. This will give us a slight border of 32 pixels from the edge of the room at all times. Now we do the same for y. We can just copy and paste that line and change x to y. Then we also need to change room width to room height. That will make us move, but what if we accidentally place the collectible directly on the player? That's a free point and we don't want that. This is where the loop comes in. So on the line, after our ending curly brace, we add our until statement and a set of braces. Now we can use the function point distance to get the distance from the collectible's position to the player's position and compare it to the range. So we write point underscore distance and add our braces. This function takes four arguments. The first set of x and y arguments, which is the collectibles, so we can just enter x and y for this set. Then another set of x and y arguments, which is the position we want to get the distance to. In this case, we want the player's x and y values, but as this is the collectible, we don't have direct access to them. We can, however, access them by stating the player's object name or ID. There is only one player object, so the name is fine. So we write obj player dot x and obj player dot y. This tells GameMaker that the variable we want can be found in obj player. Now we check if the distance is higher or equal to the range, and if it isn't, the loop will run again and we'll go to a new random position. Remember, do until loops will always run the code at least one time, so the random movement will always happen once. It will then continue to run until we are out of range of the player. Now we need to check for a collision with the player, which we can do using a collision event. So let's add a new event. We go to collision and then select obj player. This event will execute every time the player's collision mask is found to be overlapping the collectible object's collision mask. Remember collision masks are linked to the sprites. Speaking of sprites, we need to link our collectible sprite to our object, so let's do that now. Alright, so when we collide, we want to add a point to the score and reposition ourselves. Remember global.score, the variable that we initialized in video 15 within the player object? We want to increment that variable by 1. So we write global.score, remember score is in all caps, plus equals 1. Also notice we don't need to tell GameMaker that this variable is in the player, as it's global and therefore accessible anywhere. Okay, so that will increment our score, now we need to move. To do this, we can just reuse our do while loop from the create event. So let's just copy and paste that under our score code. Now when we collide with the player, we add one point and use our do while loop to move to a new location out of range of the player. All we have to do now is add one of these to our room and run the game to see if it works. Also, ensure that there is a player object within the room to collect it with. Okay, so we have our collectible there on the screen, not where we placed it as it moved itself on creation. Now if we move over to touch it, it moves to a new position. It also added a point to our score, but we have no way of seeing the score yet. We'll remedy this in the next video. The final thing to do is create an enemy every time we collect a coin. So back in our collision event with the player, we can make use of the function instance create layer. There are two functions for creating instances in GameMaker Studio 2. 
Instance create layer creates an instance on a specific instance layer within a room. There is also instance create depth, which creates an instance based on a depth value that we supply. A higher depth is drawn further from the camera and a lower depth is nearer. The thing about the depth function is, it creates a new layer for every time we execute it which is just unnecessary when we already have a layer being used. We're far better off using instance create layer and telling it to be created on our pre-existing layer. So we type instance underscore create underscore layer and add our braces. The first two arguments is the position to create the enemy at. Let's reuse the random placement code we have for the coin so that we don't ever place an enemy directly on the player. That would not be a nice death experience. So we add a few lines above this and we can copy and paste our do until loop. We need two temporary variables to keep track of where we are about to place the enemy so that we can do our distance checks to the player. So let's use VAR to initialize two temporary variables called XX and YY above the new do while loop. We'll set these to random room width and random room height. Now we'll edit our new do while loop to check the distance between our xx and yy variables and the player. If the range isn't far enough, the loop will run again until the range is far enough. Okay, now we can use these xx and yy variables as our first two arguments while creating our enemy object. So we just put xx and yy in as the first two arguments. Now the third argument is the layer ID or name. We'll use the name. To get the layer name, we can just head to our room and look at the name of the layer, which is instances. So now back in our function, we enter instances as a string. Ensure that it is a string using a set of single or double quotes or GameMaker will interpret it as a variable. Finally, the fourth argument is the object to create. We want a random type of the three enemies. For this, we can use the choose function. This function allows us to enter multiple arguments and the function will return one of those at random. So we write choose, and then we can enter each of the three enemies as the arguments. So obj enemy hor, obj enemy vert, and obj enemy diag. And that's it. We have a loop to find a random position away from the player. We then use that position to create a new enemy in the room, and the enemy will be randomly chosen from the three types. Let's run the game to test this out. All right, so we pick up a coin, and there we go, a new enemy moving around the room. If we get another coin, we get another enemy. That's it for this video. We learned how to randomize an object's position, check the distance between two points, make use of a do until loop, and also the collision event. We also learned how to create new instances through code, and also how to use the choose function.